Hello, my name is Julio. And my name is Jordan. And my name is Lamia. And today we will be explaining what the Doppler effect is and what role it has in astronomy. Let's start off with a basic question. What is astronomy? The standard definition of astronomy is the study of the universe. This includes the study of planets, galaxies, and other celestial objects. One of the major components of astronomy is astrometry, which is the study of the measurements of positions of stars and planets. There are different kinds of astronomy, including radio, infrared, optical, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma-ray astronomy, as well as other kinds of astronomy that don't have to do with the electromagnetic spectrum. The kind of astronomy that relates to the Doppler effect, which we will get into in a minute, is called optical astronomy, also known as visible light astronomy. Optical astronomy has to do with visual observations and optical telescopes. The subcategories to visible light astronomy are photometry, spectroscopy, and polarimetry. But you don't need to memorize those. Optical astronomers use a variety of devices, including motion detectors, especially those that use charge coupled devices. Charge coupled devices, or CCDs, are objects that measure the movement of electric charges. It is used in astronomy to measure thermal noise and cosmic rays. And then other devices, such as Hubble Space Telescopes, help to take this raw data and turn it into useful images. Now, the purpose of this video is to determine the speed of celestial objects. This is done with our knowledge of the Doppler effect. But before we delve into how that is done, what is the Doppler effect? The Doppler effect is the apparent shift or change in frequency observed when there is relative motion between the observer and the source of the frequency. But what is frequency? Frequency is the number of cycles gone through in a second by a wave. It is measured in hertz. But what is a wave? A wave is a disturbance propagating energy through space through compressions and rarefactions if the wave is longitudinal, meaning that the disturbance is parallel to the propagation of the energy, or through crests and troughs if the wave is transverse, meaning that the disturbance is perpendicular to the propagation of energy. What is energy? That's a different video. There are two types of waves, mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves are waves that need a medium for them to travel through. Examples can be sound waves, which normally travel through air, but can travel through any other medium such as water or even a solid object. Electromagnetic waves, on the other hand, don't need a medium for them to travel through. Light is an example of an electromagnetic wave. There are various things that can be calculated from a wave. A period is the time it takes for a wave to go through one cycle, that being the wave going through a crest and through a trough. The period of a wave can be calculated using the following formula, where t equals period and f equals frequency. It can also be calculated by looking at a displacement time graph and figuring out the, what the period is from there. Coming off of that formula, frequency can be calculated using this formula, where the variables are the same. Wavelength, the length of a wave, can be calculated by looking at a displacement versus a distance graph, picking a point on the wave, such as the top of a trough, and finding the distance from which that point repeats. The speed of the wave can be calculated using the traditional distance formula. When distance and time are not given, the distance formula can be applied to the corresponding wave terms that share the same units with the distance formula, these being wavelength for distance and period for time. This will eventually result in the following. So the speed of the wave can also be calculated by multiplying the wavelength of the wave times the frequency of the wave. Of course, this knowledge can also be applied to calculate the frequency or the wavelength of the wave. This all relates to the Doppler effect because scientists use the apparent frequencies recorded combined with their knowledge of electromagnetic waves as speed to determine the wavelength traveled by the waves that are reflecting off of the actual object on which they are focusing on. Speaking of apparent frequencies, how are those calculated? Well, simply put, the following formulas are used. When the source is moving away from the observer, when the source is moving towards the observer, when the observer is moving towards the source, when the observer is moving away from the source. To recap, waves are the propagation of energy through space via a disturbance. Waves can be either longitudinal, where the disturbance is parallel to the propagation of energy through space, or transverse, where the disturbance is perpendicular to the propagation of energy through space. Waves are also either mechanical, where they need a medium for them to travel through, such as water or air, or electromagnetic, where they don't need a medium for them to propagate. Waves repeat themselves, each repetition being a cycle. The number of cycles in one second is the wave's frequency. Frequency is usually what is observed when observing waves, either by ear or by sight, but can be observed incorrectly depending on whether or not there is relative motion between the observer and the source of the wave. This observation of this apparently different frequency is known as the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is the apparent shift or change in frequency observed when there is relative motion between the source of the frequency and the observer. So we learned what the Doppler effect and astronomy are. But now, 
How do astronomers use the Doppler effect in astronomy? That's what we're just about to find out. There are several clever things astronomers can find out about celestial objects. Are they moving away? Are they moving towards Earth? If so, by what speeds? So, let's dig into this actual concept. Spectral line emissions are carefully observed and determined to be either red-shifted or blue-shifted by a certain amount. The apparent frequencies recorded are then compared to the actual frequency of light and are then used to indicate whether the object is moving away from Earth, towards Earth, and at which speeds. So, what exactly does this mean? Basically, scientists plug in the apparent frequencies recorded into the Doppler effect formula and thus derive the speed at which the object is moving. If the emissions are redshifted, meaning that the apparent frequencies are lower, then the celestial object is moving further away from Earth, which allows us to use this formula. However, if the emissions are blue-shifted, then the, recorded, the apparent recorded frequencies are higher, meaning that the object is moving towards Earth, which means that we'll have to use this other formula. The formulas just stated can be used to find the speed of the celestial object, which can then lead scientists to find other distance information. There are many ways for us to apply this knowledge, but one way that I found cool is that scientists can map out exactly what our galaxy and other galaxies may look like from a different perspective than our own. In summary, astronomy is the study of space. There are many kinds of astronomy, but this video focused on optical astronomy. The Doppler effect comes into play as it allows us to track the movement of celestial objects by comparing their apparent frequencies to their actual frequencies. That's it. That's how the Doppler effect relates to astronomy and how it helps to measure the speed of celestial objects. Thanks for watching!